<clears throat> so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to draw the base and the uh, top to my uh, door buzzer. Um, to do that, I'm going to need to start off with a rounded rectangle. Now over here, if I click and hold down on the shape tool, I've got lots of choices of different shapes that I can use. And I'm just going to have this rounded rectangle tool here. Now I can just come and start drawing a rounded rectangle like so. Right. I'm just going to undo that with Control Z. However, it's much more accurate just to give a single click and then to type in the exact dimensions that I want for my um, base. So I'm going to want a rounded rectangle with 60 mil width, 60 mil height, and a 10 mil corner radius. I can click, and that will place that in here. Now at the moment, it's a very thin blue line that you can see around here that represents the edge of my rounded rectangle. I want that to be a little bit clearer, so I'm just going to come up to my stroke weight here. I'm going to put in a stroke weight of one, so I get a nice thick black line around there, um, showing the the boundary of my rectangle. Let's move this into position now. So I'm going to click on my selection tool, and I can now move my rounded rectangle. And I'm going to move it up towards my guides. Now you should notice that when you start moving towards a guide, when the edge hits the guide, it will. Um, lock into place and I'm going to move it across and that locks into place like that and what that does is that's locking the edges of that shape to the guides so I know its position is accurate okay but I might not be 100% sure that that is in position that that edge is up against that guide and this edge is up against this guide so what I can do is I can come over to my transform box here Come over to my transform box here, and up here, this will tell me exactly where that rounded rectangle is positioned. Okay, and at the moment, it's positioned at x equals 130 and y equals 130. So that means the central point there is positioned at 130 and 130, which is correct if you think about it. It's 60 mil. So this distance here between here and here should be 30 mil. I put this guide on 100 mil. So 100 plus 30 is 130. So using these transform, this transform palette over here, we can get an accurate um, display of exactly where my rounded rectangle is. So that's great. I've got my rounded rectangle in position. Okay, so the base <coughs> is also going to be a rounded rectangle. I'll draw that in a second, but we're going to need some way of connecting the base and the lid of my buzzer. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a couple of 3 mil holes in the um, in this rounded rectangle here. And those 3 mil holes are where my machine screws would go to connect the base and the top. So let's come up back up to my shape tool. I'm going to choose an ellipse. And again, I'm just going to click somewhere. Let's do that again. Just click and it will open up and tell me what size ellipse I want. And I want a 3 mil by 3 mil ellipse. Let's put that there in nicely. Let's come and grab my ellipse and we want to put it into position now. So I'm just going to place it over here my rectangle. Now then, I know I want my this ellipse here 26 millimeters from the top edge and 25 millimeters from this edge. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to place it to start off with up here so it's intersecting where my two guides are. And again, if we look at our transform palette over here, we can see it's 100 mil and 100 mil. So we know that's accurate. I'm now going to move it. So I said I want to move this 26 millimeters down from the top edge. So all I do is on the Y, I just want to add 26 millimeters. And that will move my ellipse down to where it should be. And then I want to move it 25 millimeters across this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to the X coordinate and just add 25 mil. And now my ellipse is in exactly the right position. Now that's one hole in the base. I'm now going to want another one. So I'm just going to copy and paste that. Now if I do a standard copy, which is Control C and then Control V, it will just place another ellipse somewhere on my artboard. Um, it's a bit random as to where it places it. Sometimes you don't want that. Sometimes you'd like to place in 
paste in place and that means paste a copy directly over the original. Now to do that I do control C and control shift V. Now, although you can't see anything has happened we've now got a copy of my ellipse that was pasted exactly over the top of the first one. So that's control C to copy and control shift V will place in paste paste in place. So let me just delete that, do one more here, so control and C, I just want my circle, so my lips selected, control C, control shift V, that's got it here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this out, and as you can see, as I drag it, I've got this little green line connecting the two ellipses. If I move that up, that green line disappears, but if I bring back down here, I've got that green line, and that's saying that those two are intersecting with each other. So the center of that and the center of that ellipse are horizontally together. Let's just carry on moving it. What I want to do is just snap it over to the edge of this um, rounded rectangle. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. So that's control and plus to zoom in. We can now see that this is positioned dead center on this edge of the rectangle. Let's come back over here and just have a look at my x coordinate. And we can see it's 160, which makes sense. We put that guide at 100, moved across 60. Okay, and now I want to move this 25 mil this way. Okay, so all I need to do is come up here and go minus 25, and that's my second ellipse in place. I'm going to zoom back out again now. 